Alrighty, let's go ahead and talk about something. Because I'm pretty sure you all have heard that more adolescents are identifying as trans now. That, like, there's a, there's a disproportionately higher number of people that are trans today than there were trans before, right? Also, Razor Sharp gave me the music is from Chrono Trigger. We done with the Mommy Vaporeon? We're done with the Mommy Vaporeon. And now those words are in the video and I, I can't undo them. Go ahead and take a look at... This one is a sketch of my partner Raz by Mathematical Cabbage. It said, a sketch of Pony Raz went alicorn because Princess Nemesis. Uh, and when I was last watching MLP, all the alicorns were princesses. Fair enough. The last uh, next one we have is from Otter Magic. It said, heard Sir is talking about having his hammer hanging from his tail, uh, getting bigger and didn't see any art of it, decided to make my own. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is the type of stuff that I that I want to actually incorporate into a model at some point. The ability for the hammer to just, like, enlarge from the tail. Because it's right there. It's hanging. He's bouncing. But that is what I would like. The last one we have here is from Anubian. This is like a Vader, Surus. Ara, Ara, you rebel scum. Cyborg Sith. General Darth Surus. I feel like this was inspired by some of the recent Fortnite games on stream. And Darth Vader just punking my ass repeatedly. As always, thank you all for the fan art submissions. If you want your fan art to be shown in a future video, the best way to do so is to drop it into the fan art section of the Discord. With that said, if you haven't hit the subscribe button already, maybe even checked out the Patreon, maybe even potentially hit the like button, all those things help the channel out a heck ton. But let's go ahead and get into the actual article itself. So, the beginning of it reads, Social contagion isn't causing more youths to be transgender, study finds. The study, published in Pediatrics, disputes the theory that more adolescents, particularly those assigned female at birth, are identifying as trans due to social influence. Vexley, thank you for redeeming your points for an... Uh, 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 you fucking be, Jen. Social contagion, in quotes, is not driving an increase of adolescents to come out as transgender, according to a new study published Wednesday in the Journal of Pediatrics. The study also found that the proportion of adolescents who were assigned female at birth and have come out as transgender also hasn't increased, which contradicts claims that adolescents whose birth sex is female are more susceptible to the so-called external influence. The hypothesis that transgender and gender-diverse youth assigned female at birth identify as transgender due to social contagion does not hold up to scrutiny and should not be used to argue against the provision of gender-affirming medical care for adolescents. The study senior author, Dr. Alex S. Uh, Kirigalian, director of the National LGBTQIA Plus Health or Education Center at the Fenway Institute and the Massachusetts General Hospital of Psychiatry uh, Gender Identity Program, said this in a statement said the social contagion theory can be tracked back to a 2018 paper published in the journal PLOS-1. Dr. Lisa Littman, who at the time was a professor of behavioral and social sciences at Brown University, coined the term rapid onset gender dysphoria, which she described as adolescents experiencing a conflict between their birth sex and gender identity suddenly uh, during or after puberty. These adolescents, she wrote, would not have met the criteria for gender dysphoria in childhood and are experiencing dysphoria due to social influence. Littman also hypothesized that adolescents assigned female at birth are more likely to be affected and, as a result, are overrepresented in groups of adolescents experiencing gender dysphoria when compared to those assigned male at birth. After intense debate and criticism, Plus One conducted a post-publication reassessment of the article and issued a correction that included changing the headline to clarify that Littman did not survey transgender or gender-diverse youth themselves, but actually only surveyed their parents. Wait. So, in, so you performed a study... 
using effectively a game of telephone. As opposed to talking to the children and getting an accurate representation of their lived experiences, you instead talked to the parents who have the children's best interests in heart, I'm sure, but also don't live and breathe in their bodies. And as they don't, they will not have an accurate representation of their experiences. They will not be able to tell you the exact reasons for X, Y, or Z. Because, again, it's not their bodies. They've had no reason to. They have no experience in that particular realm. So this, uh... Yeah, study the studies that don't ask the subjects themselves. Big, big red flag. Real awkward big red flag. But let's go ahead and continue. Because, I mean, really, there can't be much more in here that's a problem, right? The test uh, To test the social contagion theory, researchers used data from 2017 and 2019 Binal Youth Risk Behavior Survey conducted by the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, which collected gender identity data from across 16 states from ages 12 to 18. In 2017, 2.4% of adolescents surveyed identified as trans or gender diverse. But in 2019, the percentage dropped to 1.6%. Researchers concluded that the de uh, decrease in overall percentage of adolescents identifying as trans is incongruent with the rapid onset gender dysphoria hypothesis. And that uh, that's what posits social contagion. The study also found that the number of transgender adolescents who were assigned male at birth being outnumbered. Uh, be, blah, 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 blah. The study also found that the number of transgender adolescents who were assigned male at birth outnumbered those assigned female at birth in both 2017 and 2019, provided additional evidence against notion of social contagion with unique susceptibility among those assigned female at birth. I have a question. What is the... What do you think the end goal is? What do you think the actual end goal is for saying that you don't actually have more males than females? Like, what's what's the what's what do you think the actual motivation is for saying that it is more likely that somebody who's uh, female will go trans than male, specifically, if the data doesn't support that? I'm I'm. For me, it feels like this is ammunition for turfs, almost. And that kind of bothers me. So, did, did you... Turfs and replacement theory, yep. And that kind of agitates me. Because all things considered, this, this shouldn't be a thing, right? There shouldn't be a conversation here about social contagion and, and all this. This feels very pointed. Like you had a specific goal in mind when you were doing the study. And you needed to, you needed to get to that goal. You needed to get to that end result. And anything that got you to that end result was worth salvaging, but things that didn't get you to that end result were worth discarding. Maybe I'm incorrect. Maybe I have it all wrong. But from my perspective, that's where a lot of this ends up leading, at least for me. But let's go ahead and continue. The social contagion hypothesis by assuming that youth are coming out, for example, because of their friends, asserts that there's some social desirability to being trans. Well, it's, I don't know what's socially desirable about high suicide rates. I don't. Look, as, as terrible of a statement as this is, there is a wonderful convenience to being cis. Not only do you not have to change the way that you socially present yourself, but you also have to take 
you don't have to take time figuring out medications, figuring out surgeries. You don't have to take time figuring out uh, whether or not your family is going to abandon you for this. Like, there is a wonderful convenience to being cis. And that's, I, I say that as somebody who's lived that life my entire life. And it's helped out a ton. Some of the only places where you will run into problems being cis are like very, very heavily trans spaces that also include having some people who are radical. Like, that's it. Those are the places you'll find trouble being cis. But you know how many of those spaces exist? In reality, not a whole lot. Because there's not much of a, a, a reason to have more of those spaces than others. And I say that not that we don't need more trans-inclusive spaces or even uh, spaces that are specifically safe spaces for trans people. I say that because there are just fewer trans people in general. Like, in total in population of the world, there's fewer of them than there are cis. So there's less of a demand for those spaces. And there's less of a need, therefore, for cis people to even exist in those spaces. And if there's not much of a need for cis people to really exist in those spaces for long bits of time, and those are some of the only spaces where it really matters a whole lot, that you are cis specifically in a negative fashion. And again, we're talking about places that are thoroughly radical, not just spaces that exist on the internet that have trans people. I start to fail to see the problem. Those spaces don't have to be my spaces. They don't. And yet. And yet. And yet we have Chip over here trying to find stuff on the ground when there's nothing on the ground for him to find. Wow, Chip. Look at you. you you're, you're doing it. But let's go ahead and continue. We've got more to talk about in the article itself. So. Do, 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 do. To evaluate these claims, researchers examined rates of bullying a among adolescents who identified as trans and gender diverse, and those who did not. They found that, consistent with other studies, trans and gender diverse youth were significantly more likely to be victims of school bullying at 38% and 45%, compared to cisgender, lesbian, gay, and bisexual youth at 30% and 28%, uh, and cisgender, heterosexual youth at 17% and 16%. The idea that attempts to flee sexual minority stigma drive teenagers to come out as transgender is absurd, especially to those of us who provide treatment to transgender and gender-diverse youth. The lead author of the study, Dr. Jack Turbin, uh, was the one who said that. Uh, he's an incoming assistant professor of child and adolescent psychiatry at the University of California. He said in a statement that the damaging effects of these unfounded hypotheses in further stigmatizing transgender and gender diverse youth cannot be understated. We hope that clinicians and policymakers and journalists and anyone else who contributes to health policy will review these findings. They wrote that despite the methodological flaws in Littman's study, the concept of rapid onset gender dysphoria has been used in recent legislative debates to argue for and subsequently enact policies that prohibit gender affirming medical care. So what we have here is bunk science being used to move public policy forward. I'm not surprised because most of the people who are willing to utilize bunk science like this, typically speaking, they're not trying to come to the truth of any matters. They're trying to utilize... Oh, we'll go ahead and say exactly what it is. They're trying to utilize confirmation bias. It's the idea... The fucked up idea, but the idea nonetheless. 
that you already know what is wrong with the world. You already know the issues with the world. You already know the problems with uh, science in regards to trans people. You already know all that. You know more than the experts. You have to know more because you're a smart person. You must know more. For if you didn't, you wouldn't be smart. But you are smart. So therefore, you must know. So the first bit of information that comes across your feed that reinforces your biases, it reinforces the opinion you already hold, you're going to jump at it. You see it. You declare it in stone. And this is not a new phenomenon, right? Confirmation bias is not a, a new thing. It's not a thing that we're unfamiliar with, especially not on this channel. We see it and deal with it all the time. And I'm sure that there are people who are very anti-trans, like Marjorie Taylor Greene and others, who would love to utilize information from these studies to harm transgender people. Because in their mind... The data's on their side, right? It has to be. So when they see data that looks like it's on their side, they're not going to fact check it. Why would they? They don't have a reason to. Says, for example, in June, Florida's Agency for Healthcare Administration issued guidance against gender affirming care for minors, including social transition which involve changing a child's name, pronouns, clothing, and hairstyle. The guidance linked to reports that cited Littman's paper. An increasing number of states have also tried to ban or restrict trans youth's access to gender-affirming medical care through the legislation. The number of bills seeking to restrict gender-affirming health care for transgender youth has grown from 1 in 2018 to 36 this year, according to an analysis by NBC News. Governors in three states, Alabama, Arkansas, and Tennessee, have successfully signed such restrictions into law, though judges have prevented those measures from taking effect in Alabama and Arkansas. The study lists several limitations, including that the data were collected through a school-based survey, and as a result, youth who didn't attend school were not represented. It also notes that youth were asked, what is your sex? And that response options were limited to male and female. It didn't ask about respondents' sex assigned at birth and didn't include an additional question about their gender identity, which is an established research method for asking about gender identity. But the researchers credited several studies that found trans and gender diverse youths were aware of the differences between their sex assigned at birth and gender identity. So now I'm curious. Let's take a look at the actual study itself. So the objective of the study, representatives of some pediatric gender clinics have reported an increase in transgender and gender diverse adolescents presenting, uh, presenting for care who were assigned female sex at birth relative to those assigned male sex at birth. These data have been used to suggest that youth come to identify as transgender because of social contagion, which underline, uh, with the underlying assumption that assigned female at birth youth are uniquely vulnerable to this hypothesized phenomenon. Reporting changes that the AMAB slash AFAB ratio has been cited in le uh, recent legislative debates regarding the criminalization of gender affirming medical care. Our objective was to examine the AMAB to AFAB ratio among United States transgender adolescents in a larger and more representative sample than past clinic recruited samples. Methods. Of course, we already went over this using the 2017 and 2019 Youth Risk Behavior Surveys. Across 16 states that collected gender identity data, we calculated the AMAP to AFAB ratio per year. We also uh, examined the rates of bullying, victimization, and suicidality in transgender youth compared to their cisgender peers. Results. The analysis included 91 or 91,937 adolescents in 2017 and 105,437 adolescents in 2019. In 2017, 2.4% 2 of the participants identified as transgender with an AMAB to AFAB ratio of 1 to uh, 1.5 to 1. In 2009, which means there's at least half as many people who are AMAB. In 2019, 
1.6% of participants identified as transgender, with the ratio being 1.2 to 1. Rates of bullying, victimization, and suicidality were higher among transgender youth when compared to their cisgender peers. Conclusion the sex assigned at birth ratio of transgender adolescents in the United States does not appear to favor AFAB adolescents and should not be used to argue against the provision of gender-affirming medical care to transgender adolescents. And then, of course, the entire study is here in its entirety with all of its data. I'll go ahead and drop a link to that in the chat if anybody would like to pour over it themselves or put it into a convenient file for whenever you have to have these arguments with people who are more annoying than me. So, what have we learned today? Well, we've learned that it's really stupid that politicians will make uh, policy decisions based off of bunk science. That's not new, but it's still annoying. What else have we learned? Have we learned anything else? Well, for me, the thing that I've learned is it is infinitely important. Infinitely important. When you are working in a scientific field to use correct methodology. If you are surveying a group of people, maybe survey the group of people and not people talking about the group of people. That feels maybe a little important to me. Just a smidge. Maybe I'm incorrect. Maybe I'm wrong. But in this case, I don't think I am. I just don't. Especially when the data is here presenting itself. So, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. But, for what I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lot of disappointment. I'm seeing plenty of reasons that we should just be doing better with our research methods, doing better as people who are looking into transgender issues. And just in general, we should be more supportive of trans people. Because when I'm looking at this information, when I see this stuff, I see an agenda. I see an agenda of people who are trying to make life harder for trans people for no real good reason. And they will use any bit of data that does not support their conclusions in a desperate attempt to support their ideals. And that's more than a little fucked up. It just says also, would there not be a uh, correlation with the population growth and the number of people who came out as trans? You'd think, but instead we have a shrinking number. And we have a shrinking number, likely, due to the increase in stigma against trans people. So there were fewer people willing to communicate and willing to come out. Sienna says, honestly, I think this is uh, left-handedness all over again. Left-handed people were persecuted by the batshit insane. Uh, and then those dumbasses died off. Left-handers started coming out of the woodwork. Yeah, left-handedness went up. Uh, we've seen numbers of gay people go up as they've been allowed to come out of the closet. And now we're seeing that that number should go up, had with trans youth, and then started slipping back down. But, anywho. Anywho. As always, everyone, if you enjoyed the content, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you haven't already. Subscribe if you haven't already. And also check out Patreon and any affiliate links that you want. With all that said, insert in the video tagline here.